we've been talking about the greatest prophet who ever lived and his greatest prophecy the Lord Jesus and Matthew 24 when people hear about the possible end of the world they wave their hands and say people have been saying such things for ages it's never happened they're right let me remind you the last book of the Old Testament Malachi was written four centuries before the coming of Christ Ezekiel says in those days people were saying every vision faileth in other words they'd all heard about the Messiah to come but he never came so century followed century after Malachi and the Messiah didn't come for 400 years but ultimately he did come now here in Matthew 24 the greatest prophet Jesus foretells the end of the world and in the next chapter which is part of the same sermon he tells a story of ten girls waiting for the bridegroom and the bride to come and they fall asleep because the important couple are delayed hour after hour but at midnight the bridegroom comes at the darkest hour not in the morning not in the afternoon but at midnight he comes so this prophecy is warning us the world will not be expecting it when Jesus comes a second time but the disciples had asked him what will be the sign and just after he mentions about the gospel going to all the world he gives the sign of the end the sign is the abomination of desolation when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet when you see it standing in the holy place then flee for the big great tribulation such as the world has never known what on earth is this sign about what is the abomination of desolation the great writer and commentator <coughs> William Barclay says we might as well confess it we don't have a clue and Vincent Taylor another great New Testament scholar said we don't have an inkling but we are meant to understand it Jesus says whoso readeth meaning reading Daniel let him understand this is not a comment from the gospel writer it's Jesus speaking gospel writers never interrupt the words of Christ so when it says whoso readeth let him understand Christ is citing from Daniel which uses the word understand about 24 times and this is a commandment the Christian world has neglected people don't study it I confess I was so intrigued by the prophecy that my wife and I went to Manchester University where my tutor was F. F. Bruce perhaps the greatest New Testament scholar of the 20th century he became our personal friend and correspondent we kept in touch until his death but when I went to Manchester I racked the libraries of Manchester City Manchester University Bodleian Library of Oxford Cambridge University Library libraries in London and the Library of Congress in America night and day I tried to work out what was this abomination of desolation whether I was on a train or walking or taking a shower or when I was supposed to be listening to a preacher on the Sabbath day my mind was still focused on the abomination of desolation I wrote my thesis on it and the university gave me a PhD for it and the university library 
published it. The original book, of course, is huge, but this is the same book in smaller print. My wife, who knows German better than me, was a great help to me because the first thing F.F. F. Bruce said to me when I said, where do I start? He said, learn German. Anyway, I spent two years on it. I want to tell you what the sign is that Christ says is the sign of the end of the world. What is the abomination of desolation? Well, it comes from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel has more influence on the New Testament than any other book. Many of Christ's themes come from the book of Daniel. The kingdom, the tribulation, the son of man, the resurrection, judgment day. All of these are from Daniel and the abomination of desolation is from Daniel and 24 times we have a reminder of the need to understand it if we're going to be ready for the end of life or the end of the world. To the Jew, the abomination of desolation was a term meaning Antichrist, the opposite power to the Messiah, the greatest opponent of God. But in Daniel, the term is applied to all those kings that persecuted God's people, applied to every empire that became a persecutor. It's applied to the Antichrist of the Middle Ages and the Antichrist at the end of time. The word abomination in the Old Testament means idolatrous. Desolation has to do with persecution. So the abomination of desolation is an idolatrous power that persecutes the people of God. Very important to notice how the book of Daniel begins. Talks of the king of the north, meaning Babylon, coming against Jerusalem, the city of peace, to attack the sanctuary, the temple, to rifle it, to blaspheme all the things that are holy. The clue, and I confess it took me many years to find this out, the clue to the second half of Daniel, the prophecies, is found in the stories that begin the book. The story of the fiery furnace, the lion's den, Belshazzar's feast. These stories have the key to the prophecies and the key to the sign of the abomination of desolation. All the stories have one key word, deliver. When Daniel's three friends are threatened with the fiery furnace by Nebuchadnezzar, they said, our God will deliver us. When Daniel is threatened with the lion's den, we're told that God delivered him. And when we come to the end of Daniel, the 12th chapter, first verse talks about the tribulation at the end of the world. But it says Christ, called Michael also, see Revelation 12, will deliver his people. Many will die in the last persecution but the majority will be delivered by Christ. This theme is carried into the New Testament. It's mentioned in Matthew, mentioned in Mark, mentioned in 2 Thessalonians, and mentioned in Revelation. It's all the way through Daniel, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, Daniel 9, Daniel 11, Daniel well, the last book of the Bible is about it. The 13th chapter of Revelation. That's the Antichrist chapter. It makes an amalgam of the four great empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome, which had persecuted the saints 
makes them into one characteristic antichrist. So if you read chapter 12 and chapter 13, you end up with three key, key figures, a false trinity, the dragon, Satan, the antichrist beast, and the false prophet, which comes like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon. So there is a picture of what will happen at the end of the world. This is the final abomination of desolation. When the church will apostatize, the love of many grows cold, and the apostate church will link with the apostate government. It says there will be an image to the beast, and the word image, of course, in the Old Testament is abomination. When it mentions a second beast, like a lamb, not coming out of the sea like the first beast, the Antichrist, but coming up out of the earth, we are reminded of Christ's words that false prophets come like a lamb, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. So in chapter 12 and 13 of Revelation, the tribulation chapter of the Bible, the Antichrist chapter of the Bible, we have the false trinity, Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. The lamb that speaks like a dragon is called the false prophet in chapter 17, chapter 19, and chapter 20. And we're told in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation that the holy city becomes Babylon and puts Christ and his people to death. So it is the coming union of apostate religion and apostate government that will be the last form of the abomination of desolation that will threaten the saints of God and kill many. It was typified when Judas invaded Gethsemane with a tenth of a legion, a band, Greek word means a tenth of a legion, 500 soldiers, priests, servants of the temple. Christ is praying in the inner recesses and they are marching from Jerusalem to take him, to capture him and to crucify him. That's typical of the end of the world. You know, it's important to understand that Passion Week typifies the end of the world. One of many great scholars has pointed out that all the great events of Passion Week circle around the theme of judgment, the stories of Christ, cursing of the fig tree, Christ being condemned. Let me read you one quotation. This is from Hendrikus Burkhoff in his book about the end of the world. In all synoptic, synoptic gospels, statements about the future are summarized right before the passion story. <clears throat> the themes dealt with are watchfulness, oppression, decrease of love, flight, finally spectacular natural phenomena, and the coming of the Son of Man in glory. It is conspicuous that all these themes recur in the following chapters, which deal with Christ's suffering, death and resurrection. The meaning is obviously the future will show on a larger and eventually worldwide scale, a repetition of what has happened in the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. That's Hendrikus Burkhoff in his book, Well-Founded Hope. Austin Farrer, another scholar, says, the substance of the last things and the substance of the passion are one and the same. So all the things that's quoted in this book, my commentary on Revelation, two volumes. My books are all available through Good News Unlimited. Some of them are available through Amazon. So understand 
the events of the last week of our Lord's life typify events that will overtake his body, the church, at the end of time. He had a small time of trouble in the Garden of Gethsemane where the sin of the world fell on him. Then a greater time of trouble at Calvary. The church will be sentenced to death. Time of trouble at the end of time. The true church, not a denomination. Those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith or gospel of Jesus Christ. They come out of all denominations, Roman Catholic and Protestant. But the church is to have the same experience as Christ. It'll truly be like a body that gets it in the neck. When Judas, typical Antichrist, came to take Christ, he typified what would happen at the end of the world. When apostate religionists will use government forces to persecute the saints of God. My dear friends, will you study this theme? Jesus commands us, whoever reads, understand it. Will you obey the Saviour? If so, you'll be ready for his coming. God bless you.